at the ASH meeting, we presented the results of a very long-running study known as the Intermediate Risk PT1 study. PT1 is actually a series of three studies which have been running since 1997. The first aspect of that study, the high-risk arm, was actually published 12 years ago. Uh, the study that we presented at the ASH meeting asked the question, in patients who have low-risk ET, so no, no um, previous thrombosis, no platelets less than 1,500, no vascular risk factors, but who are a little bit older, so aged between 40 and 59, is there a role for preemptive addition of a drug, specifically hydroxyurea, to aspirin? Now this study has actually been running since 1997 and it's a really important study because we know that these diseases are very chronic, we need a really large long-term study to answer key questions for patients like these who often have a very low number of events but the events can be really devastating for patients so specifically the study was to look at could we prevent a number of vascular endpoints, so heart attack, strokes, DVT, etc. And what was the impact of the addition of hydroxyurea in terms of transformation, both in preventing perhaps myelofibrosis transformation, but also what was the impact on risk of leukaemia. So in this 20-year-old study, we were able to present the data at this meeting. Uh, the study is very important because it's of a size and duration that will be very difficult to repeat in the future. Essentially the study shows that there is no role for the preemptive addition of hydroxyurea for these patients and these patients are best managed with aspirin alone. It also adds though to data regarding risk of events which was very very low. There were only 11 events on both arms of the study so less than one in a hundred patients had an event every year so that's really important in terms of it, um, informing patient management. Furthermore we didn't see an excess of transformation to myelofibrosis, leukaemia in either arm but we did see a little bit more polycythemia vera occurring in the patients who didn't receive hydroxyurea. So this is really important because it will influence um, patient treatment going forward and uh, we have also a large number of other little studies around that including looking at the impact of JAK2 which doesn't appear to have an impact. So that means we need to rethink a little bit how we use the IPSET thrombosis score in this setting.